All right, well, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for everyone for joining us on this call today. My name is Dr. Michael Donnelly and I'm the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment here for the Palisades School District. I wanna thank everyone for joining. Uh, of course, at the onset, wanna let everyone know uh, that this uh, presentation is being recorded uh, so that we can marry the audio component with the visual uh, that is on our website. So for any of our families or, or grownups who are unable to join us this afternoon, uh, can go back and can refer to that at another time. Again, I want to thank everyone who has dialed in for this call. Uh, we're excited about some new features coming out with Google in the coming months where we'll be able to have other folks join in and be able to see presentations live like we can in the district. So that'll be something forthcoming, we're being told by Google. So we're looking forward to that. Um, again, I want to thank all of you for being part of this call today. Um, Palisades community is an amazing place. Educators, parents, families, kiddos, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get started soon. Uh, we're gonna be able to uh, have our friends back and learning. And we're excited today uh, to be able to um, you know share with you what we've been able to develop as our Palisades Elementary Cyber Academy. A lot of hard work has gone into this over the summer, as well as uh, most recently with our teachers back. Uh, and we do have a presentation that was shared with you. But I just want to review quickly that if uh, for other information, if you're interested, we're going to continue to develop the website. But if you do go to the Palisades um, website and you click on our district, there's a link for Palisades Cyber Academy. And then once you click there, you'll have a menu of options available to you. Uh, and one of those is information sessions. And that is where we have the presentation from late July, as well as then um, the presentation for today that we're gonna go over. And then, as I mentioned, we'll um, add the audio component to that afterwards for our families who are unable to join us this afternoon. So for today, what we'd like to do is to, to basically just talk a little bit about uh, what, our, what our elementary cyber academy is gonna look like for you uh, for the start of this school year. Uh, we're fortunate to be joined by uh, nine incredible educators. Um, many thanks to our school board of directors for their support. We were able to uh, find a way by which to make it such that all of our teachers for our cyber academy are our teachers. They are Palisades teachers. And what that means is that we're able to offer a really robust curriculum, the Palisades curriculum, to all of our friends so that when and if a student comes back to face-to-face -to -face, or hopefully fingers crossed, right, that next year we're all back together, back to normal, um, then we're able to continue on with our next grade levels very seamlessly. And so I wanna thank all of you for, for participating in this option as part of the Palisades Elementary Cyber Academy. I know our teachers are excited to get started uh, and we're gonna work through it. We're gonna work through it together because that's what we do. Um, as we shared in July, um, the, the fall, the, this entire school year is different than the spring. Uh, the spring is what we refer to as emergency learning. Uh, we literally, one day we're in school and then told you can't come back. Uh, and so we had to figure out what to do in order to provide education for our students in the community. And again, during that time, uh, did a really great job in so far as getting out Chromebooks, coming up with activities. Uh, our teachers continued to teach as best they could. And we took that time to reflect on what are some things we can do to make it better. So the design of the Palisades Elementary Cyber Academy is to mirror school as much as possible um, so that our face-to-face -face kiddos are in the classroom and our, and our virtual students, our Cyber Academy students, are in their own classrooms at home. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some, some ideas for setting up a productive workspace at home as well a little bit later in the presentation. So again, uh, we're gonna go over the presentation with you. Hopefully that will address uh, any questions that you might have. Uh, and then uh, at the end, um, we do have, we were booked until 1.45 and then we have an, a secondary presentation thereafter. Uh, so if there are uh, questions that are good for the entire group, uh, and if we have time, we'll definitely take those. Uh, if not, I do encourage you to reach out to me via email as well as to uh, your child's teacher as well at this point so that we can answer and make you feel as comfortable as possible as we navigate um, a new a, a current reality, right? Uh, it's a little bit different for all of us, but we're gonna make it work. And, and I'm certain that our friends are gonna do a really phenomenal job. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end for those on the call, for our teachers who are here, and then as well, since it is being taped, uh, uh, we'll be able to, to see what the screen looks like. Uh, again, as part of that video later on on the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen at this point um, and, and go through the presentation that you've received so that we can um, share that with you and then kind of add a little bit of, of um, audio to, to what you saw written down. Um, so we're going to get started. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your patience uh, with us, for your compassion for and towards us, and your work alongside with us. Uh, we're all in this together for the success of our, our Palisade students. 
and families. Uh, and together, we're going to make sure that we can make this uh, one of the best years ever. Uh, so again, thank you for being here. What we're going to do is I'm going to ask each of our Palisades Elementary Cyber Academy teachers uh, when it's their turn on their grade level slide, uh, just to unmute and say hello uh, um, and a comment or two, and that'll be great. And we'll move right along. So we're going to start get started with our, our kindergarten, which is this is Amanda Dalton. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Dalton and I'm the kindergarten cyber teacher this year and I'm really looking forward to welcoming all the new kindergartners to Palisades this year. So um, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Dalton. Then we move on to first grade. We have two sections of first grade cyber academy. We have Mrs. Becky Landis and Mrs. Zoe Walsh. So we'll start with Mrs. Landis. Hi, I'm Mrs. Landis. Um, I'm one of the first grade cyber teachers this year. Um, some of you may know me last year um, from Durham as Miss Becky Dillingham. Um, I got married over the summer, so just a change of last name, but I'm so looking forward to this school year and working with your kids and just making it an awesome school year, um, no matter near or far. Thank you. Ms. Walsh? <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm Miss Walsh. I'm the other um, first grade virtual teacher. Um, I'm really excited to start our school year on Tuesday and um, meet all of my students. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you so much. Moving on to second grade, we also have two second grade sections for our elementary cyber academy. We have Mrs. Tricia Prisky and Miss Danielle Murphy. So we'll start with Mrs. Prisky. Hi everybody, my name's Trisha Prisky. I've been teaching at Palisades for the past, oh, 17 years. I've been in third grade for a very long time, so I'm really excited to take on second grade in this new learning journey that we're we'll all be on together. So if you are in part of my class, you received emails and Class Dojo email notifications, so please feel free to reach out to me. Um, anytime, I'll be more than willing to help you walk through anything that I put in the emails, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Awesome. Thank you. Ms. Murphy. Hello, I'm um, Ms. Danielle Murphy. I am new to Palisades this year, but I'm so excited to be a part of this great learning community, and I look forward to working with your students and same as all the other teachers said, I'm always open for communication. So reach out to me if you need anything and I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So third grade, we move down to Mrs. Kate Robbie. Hi everyone, um, I'm Kate Robbie. I have been teaching in the district. I believe this is my 11th year. Number of those years have been in third grade. So I'm looking forward to having third graders um, and I will have third, all third graders from all three elementaries. So looking forward to a great year. Thank you, Mrs. Robbie. Fourth grade, we have Mrs. Angie Leopold. Hi, I'm Angie Leopold and I will be teaching fourth grade. And same, I'm very much looking forward to meeting everyone from all three elementary schools. You will be receiving an email from me later on today and um, looking forward to seeing everyone next week. Great, thank you so much. And then fifth grade, we also have two sections of fifth grade this year. So we have Ms. Chris Garr and Dr. Lisa Wabel. So we'll start with Mrs. Garr. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Garr. Nice to meet you. I'm very much looking forward to working with all your children this year. Um, can't wait to see some familiar faces from Springfield and meet all the new faces as well. And uh, I, too, will be sending an email later today to welcome everyone. Um, you can look forward to that and uh, reach out if you have any questions or problems. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garr. Dr. Wabel? Hi there, I'm Lisa Wabel. Um, I've been in Palisades for several decades. I'm, I'm not counting anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm really excited to start this new journey of cyber teaching, and I can't wait to work with all of you. Um, not to sound like a broken record, but please always email, no question is too silly. Um, and I can't wait to learn all of this with you. So have a great day. Great. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Wavell. So again, thank you so much. And those are our nine uh, elementary cyber academy educators. We're very excited uh, to have those nine folks on board with us. Uh, and they're ready and willing to work with, with your students, as you heard. Uh, there's a, another way you can meet them a little bit more personally is on our next slide uh, at your leisure. If you've not yet clicked on the presentation, then you can go ahead uh, later and click on that link, a quick hello from us to you. Um, our teachers thought it'd be a great idea to, to tape themselves up through what's called Flipgrid and provide just a short little brief welcome video uh, so that you can have that introduction in your home. Uh, so go ahead and, and, and take a look at that when you have some time and hopefully you enjoy that. So um, next, I just wanted to put on, on here as well, because again, as we mentioned, um, we know that um, all of our students at the Elementary Cyber Academy are coming from all three of our buildings. Um, we do have approximately 170 students, uh, K through five, who, are, who um, are participating in the Palisades Elementary Cyber Academy. Uh, and so therefore what we've done is we've divided our teachers across the district so that they can have what's called a home school or a home building, which is where our teachers will be coming into school on different days of the week to then use the resources there, the whiteboards, uh, to tape some lessons, to be, to be live for lessons. Uh, and have that space where they're able to then still utilize all of those resources and also collaborate uh, with their colleagues at the same grade level who are in the face-to-face -face classroom. So again, we have that, that, that um, comparison of what's happening real time in the classroom and then also what's happening real time in our virtual setting. So I just want to include that for everyone, again, because uh, as a family, you know, you typically would go to Springfield and you would go to Mr. Davis, or as a family, you were at Tinicum and you'd go to Ms. Link and at Durham, Mrs. Holly. So for those of you who are, let's say, are in, in a third grade classroom, everyone has Mrs. Robbie. Well, uh, Mrs. Robbie is housed at Springfield, and so Mr. Davis is her principal uh, that she works directly with. And so I just wanted to make sure that we all had that available to us as well. Uh, we are uh, working through what uh, back to school nights will look like uh, for September. Uh, and at that point, um, for those who may not have met each of the principals yet, uh, we'll have an opportunity to, for you to be able to do that as well, uh, as they are definitely a part of, of this team. Uh, they're not with us on this call, however, because we're trying to make as much use of time as we can. And they're in each of the buildings working through and welcoming uh, some kindergarten face-to-face -face students and families uh, and so that's why they're not with us at this time, but they wanted to, uh, for me to say hello on their behalf as well. And they're very excited uh, that we're continuing in this journey together. So next up in our presentation, let's see here, is we have the daily schedule. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and talk a little bit about this. And then of course, any of my uh, teachers who, who wanna fill in anything that I've missed at any point in time, please just take yourself off mute. Um, I'm actually not able to see anything on the screen except for my actual screen that I'm presenting. Uh, so if you take yourself off mute, just uh, go ahead and interrupt uh, for my teachers if you don't mind, uh, cause I can't see you to call on you. Um, but what we have here is our daily schedule. So again, it was, it's, it's, it was, a really interesting summer to be able to walk through and to look at best practices in virtual learning, um, comparing what programs are. I'm, I'm fortunate that I have some friends and other who are educators in other states and parts of the country that started before we did, got to take a look at some of the models that they were putting into place, and really got to talk with our cyber teachers about what is it that we want to do to make the Palisades Elementary Cyber Academy the very best that it can be for our kiddos, because that's number one and that's what's most important to us. Um, and so we went ahead and took a look at the schedule and thought and looked also at the families who registered. Um, we also noticed that a lot of our families who registered have multiple children um, at the elementary level. Um, and so one, by design, we wanted to create a schedule that would be consistent K through five. So you did receive a copy of the schedule that you can print out. And we thought that by keeping it the same for all kiddos at the elementary level, it would be easier for families so that you know that all of my all of my kids need to get on their computers at 9 a.m. every day, uh, as opposed to one grade level at one time, another grade level at a different time. Um, so that was the reason and the number one reason as to why we went ahead with a common schedule for our cyber learners. There are other implications there within, uh, but again, that was the idea for that was to hopefully in any way that we could try to keep it navigable and, and easier for our families, we wanted to try to do that. So what you'll notice, and as you see here, um, is that we have a single asterisk next to the points of the day in which our teachers will be going live with our students. We are including live instruction every day for a variety of our lessons so that our boys and girls have that contact time with their teachers, they're able to ask questions, they're able to hear the instruction, uh, and, it's, and it's, again, trying to re replicate as much as possible what that classroom face-to-face -face experience, what school is like normally, what we're so used to, um, but just through a virtual setting. So what you'll notice here is the time along the left-hand corner, as well as then each of the sessions, 
essentially nine o'clock in the morning, just like we would if we were in, in, in uh, face to face building and brick and mortar uh, is when we would start with attendance and morning meeting. Uh, we value in Palisades that concept of having time to talk, uh, to reflect, uh, to review expectations and to talk about how we're feeling. And so that's the purpose of morning meeting each day for 15 minutes. And that's also the time during which students will be marked present or absent for the day. Uh, and so we do ask that all of our boys and girls log in at nine o'clock uh, and that they're able to then participate with their classmates and their teacher. Um, then you'll notice throughout the day, as I mentioned, that um, you will have sections of the day which are smaller chunks, which have one asterisk. So for example, read aloud and reading mini lesson has one asterisk. What that means is that our teachers during that 30 minute window will be providing a lesson about reading, whether it's they're reading a book aloud, perhaps maybe they're teaching a little lesson about reading or literacy that's happening during that part, part of instruction. And that's when our students will be logged in. And so they'll move right from morning meeting into that read aloud, just like they would in their face-to-face -face classroom. And then that gives the teacher that opportunity to teach that lesson. Will the lesson always last 30 minutes? It will not. Um, so, and also at, depending on your grade level, like kindergarten, for example, Mrs. Dalton might start out a little bit slower and having the boys and girls logged in for a little bit less time. It's because we also fully recognize that we don't want, and nor does the schedule have, all of our students logged in from 9 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. That is not, that is not the case. Uh, I know, um, I, I'm aware of a couple of, couple of, um, misinterpretations floating out there on social media. So I want to make sure I put that out there for you, uh, that this schedule does not have uh, our students face-to-face uh, -face or logged on in front of a screen every day from 9 to 3.30. And that was also by design uh, because we want to make sure our, our, our kids are getting up, moving around, uh, and not just sitting in front of that screen. So then we take a break, right? And then we have what you see there, RELA centers or reading and language arts centers. And again, this mirrors what happens in the classroom. So you'll notice there for that one hour that there is both a single asterisk as well as a double asterisk. What that what that essentially means or tells grown-ups at home, families at home, is that that time is not designed to be live instruction every day. That time is designed to be what's considered asynchronous, which means in students are working independently on an assignment. Um, however, that's also a time where, like in the classroom, a teacher might say, all right, I'm going to meet with these five students today in a small group because we're going to focus on a certain component of the text. And those students would then be invited to participate in that meeting for part of that time. Um, so again, that chunk of time from 9.45 until 11.05 that you'll see where there's a break and then centers and then a break will not be live time every day, uh, nor will there ever be a time in which a student is going to always be on from 9 until 11.05. That's, that's breaks are built in by design and the centers are designed to be rotating. So teachers have the opportunity to work with individuals in small groups, just like they would in the classroom. Then you'll notice again, writing and grammar, same idea. So that is uh, both a single and a double asterisk, which means that there will be times during which there will be a live lesson. Uh, there will be times during which it'll be a taped lesson that the students would access uh, on in, in their Google Classroom. Um, and there might be a time when maybe a teacher calls together a few boys and girls to work with her uh, to talk about or work through a specific topic or, or area that they're finding that they need either extra support in or perhaps enrichment in. So again, that's one of those that's gonna be driven by the teacher and the students. We do have uh, an hour break in the middle of the day from 11.35 to 12.35. So what lunch and recess might look like uh, in the home and what you what sorts of activities uh, you end up doing for that recess time. But it's great to get up, shut down that Chromebook, move, have water, and, and, and eat a nutritious lunch. So that's what we have built in there for that time. You'll then notice at 12.35, it's another short chunk of time where it's called math mini lesson. And similar to the morning mini lesson, that also has one asterisk because the idea is at 12.35, all of our boys and girls are logged in to their Google Classrooms and our teachers will be live with them to conduct that mini lesson or what we call whole group instruction. So it's that new topic that is being sh uh, shown to the students. Um, it might be a review of something that was learned the day previous. But again, that's just like in the face-to-face -face classroom where our boys and girls will be listening to the teacher, working with the teacher. And again, that may last for the entire 30 minutes, most likely it will not last the entire 30 minutes and not and not even every day. But again, that is a time, a touch point when at 1235, all of our students know this is when I need to be back on into my classroom with my teacher. Just like before, uh, when we have centers uh, or, or small groups, that's what you see for the next 50 minutes. And so that's why you have a single and double asterisk. Again, teachers will provide opportunities, menus of work for students to do based on where they are, that their, their supports that they need or the enrichment that they need. Again, they may call together a small group of students and, and, and for, uh, have a variety of 
small groups throughout the course of that time for short periods of time working with them. So again, that's an asynchronous or not necessarily not a lifetime where your student would have to be in front of the computer unless the teacher um, has asked them to do so or because they have work to do in that, in that subject area. We then have a short little five minute break as well to get up and stretch. And then we move into uh, the afternoon. You'll notice that the afternoon is essentially asynchronous. Uh, what that means is from two to 2.30, um, all of our boys and girls in our, in our elementary schools have what's called a what I need time, so win time. And what that means is for the students is they say, you know, well, what I need today is extra help in grammar, or what I need today is to work on some of my math facts. And so teachers will be working as they do face to face to create a menu of options for kiddos. Um, again, this is an opportunity to get some extra supports, whether it may be um, a Title I service or maybe it's extra um, small group instruction or one-on-one -on -one time. Maybe it's an enrichment time where maybe Ms. Becker will be working with some of our students who are identified with um, a gifted IEP. Um, a whole slew of opportunities uh, can happen during the win time, just as they do in brick and mortar. Uh, and so it'll be about finding out what kids need to help support them in, in any variety of ways during that time. But again, that is an asynchronous time unless um, a teacher or um, an outside uh, person, whether that be, again, Ms. Becker for gifted, uh, maybe Ms. Rathgab or Mrs. Vasallo for speech and language, for example, may use that, some of that time to provide those outside services. 2.30 to 3 is, again, 30 minutes, which mirrors our face-to-face our, our -face schedule. This entire schedule mirrors our face-to-face -face schedule in the blocks of time. The face-to-face the -face schedule, of course, can't be the same uh, throughout the day for each grade level uh, because we have to uh, utilize resources differently in building. So that's what's kind of cool about the, the, the virtual component is we can have the same schedule because we can all be working simultaneously. So you notice from 2.30 to 3 is science or social studies. We dedicate approximately 90 days, so half of the year for science and half of the year for social studies, depending on the grade level. And so what you'll notice for that section is that'll be more asynchronous than synchronous. There'll be a lot of um, taped lessons. There'll be lots of videos, particularly for science from our provider. Um, we're gonna start the year off with social studies for all of our kiddos, uh, K through five in any of our buildings and also virtually uh, so that we can continue to compile some of those videos from our uh, Amplify Science vendor and then find ways to then make those experiments as, as tangible as we can for our, our friends who are learning from home. And then you'll also see as well for special, special, um, our, our six specials that we have, uh, six days in the week, uh, our specials will also be asynchronous. And what our teachers will be doing is we'll be providing lessons uh, each week so that you'll be able to go on. And if you want for your student to participate and to, to, to have a music lesson, you'll click on the music lesson link. If you want for them to do the artwork, they can click on the artwork link. Um, we did have to uh, um, shorten the specials period for all of our students uh, K through five this year in order to provide time for breaks and for um, you know review of sanitation and things of that nature to be mindful of those transitions, but also to make sure that we were not losing much time in the areas of math and reading and language arts. All of our subjects are very important to the whole child. Uh, but again, we also recognize that our students um, have been out of our school buildings for just about uh, just under six months at this point. So we wanted to make sure that we could honor uh, as much time as we could in the day for both math and the reading and language arts component. Um, so our specials areas will be 30 minutes. And again, as I mentioned, those will be asynchronous um, where, with lessons each week. Uh, there will be new lessons that our students can access if they want. Um, a one caveat is that um, our specialists will, will not be providing a grade uh, for our students um, K through five in any of our buildings or virtually this year. Again, because their curriculum is being somewhat modified uh, to fulfill, you know, having 30 minutes as opposed to 45 and also to navigating the fact that, you know, our specialists teach all 630 students. We want to try to make it manageable for them as well um, for, the, for when they're in the face to face setting, they'll be moving from classroom to classroom uh, as opposed to our students moving into those spaces. So, again, just trying to make sure we can navigate and look out for everyone's best interests as best we can. So that's the schedule in, in somewhat of a nutshell, I guess you could say. Uh, I, um, again, as I said, I can't see my teachers if anyone has any comments, but so I'll pause for one second for our teachers. And as I mentioned, um, I'd like for us to get through the full presentation and then we'll open up uh, for any of our, our folks who are calling in uh, with some questions for the good of the group. Um, so any teachers, anything that I might have missed? Uh, hey, Dr. Hey, Donnie. Donnie. I, I just wanted to, um, boy, I sound like I'm echoing. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. I don't know why I'm echoing. Um, I just wanted to point out that, yes, that's our schedule for the year. However, um, it might change a little bit for the first week of school. If you're face-to-face -face with students, um, we like to get the to know the kids the first week of school. So um, 
it might not look exactly like this until probably the second week of school, because we'll probably do a lot of uh, getting to know you activities the first week. But each teacher is different. So just um, look for the link, uh, you know, in your Google Classroom to let the students know when they would like them to come on to meet them. OK. Great. Thank you. That's and that's that's a great piece as well. Thank you, Ms. Gar. Uh, and we will uh, as well uh, uh, follow um, essentially the six day cycle as well um, in our in our virtual school. Uh, and so um, and that'll be that's on the district calendar. So we'll follow that same six day cycle um, days off. Everything stays the same for our, our, our learners, uh, just as if they were face to face. So if school is out for uh, a holiday, then we're off for the holiday as well. Um, if the school is in for a half day, then we'll be in for half day as well. And we'll talk about uh, developing what those schedules will look like um, later. Uh, we're not quite there yet because we don't have a half day other than um, it will, for us, we don't have a half day until uh, November. And so we'll talk about that once we get closer to that time. All right, awesome. So then continuing on here um, to our next piece. So schedule explained, again, just uh, putting into words what I kind of went over for you. Uh, but again, um, hopefully that does help to explain things a little bit. Uh, lots of break time, lots of not needing to be in front of a computer screen time. And again, uh, more so just as a reminder that when you're looking at it, if you were to, if, as a grown up at home to highlight it, um, the, the three most essential or most critical times to ensure that your student is logged in and live are nine o'clock and then continuously for the night until 945, but nine o'clock, 915 and 1235. Um, and again, all other lessons would then be shared out with students um, individually or in small groups if the teacher is needing for them to um, meet with her um, for those other times. Uh, so again, it's just those three times of the day um, that students will be uh, required to be uh, live um, each day of the school week. And as Ms. Gar shared too, the first couple of days anyways, getting to know you and we're all transitioning back to what school is, right? And so this schedule in and of itself uh, may not actually be implemented fully until the first or excuse me, the second uh, cycle, which begins on uh, September 10th, which is day one. But again, depending on your child's teacher and grade level, um, portions of this schedule will be um, implemented uh, at varying times over the first couple of days of school. All right, so as I just said too, attendance, uh, um, we are required by the, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to ensure that our boys and girls are present for school for at minimum 180 days of the school year. And so in order to do that, uh, that's why we have those touch points in the, over the course of the day. And at nine o'clock, as I mentioned, our teachers, when our students log in, uh, they'll greet our boys and girls and then they'll begin their day. And that's when they'll take attendance, just like they would face to face and put that into PowerSchool, which is our, our system of tracking. Um, what's the benefit though, as you know, is that you don't have to worry about getting up even earlier to put on your jacket in the winter time to get on a school bus and, and wait to get into school, right? You can just be ready to go by that nine o'clock hour so that when you're logged in, uh, our students are ready to begin their learning for the day. If a student is to be absent or needs to be absent, of course, uh, those absent notes can be mailed to the teacher uh, and then we can work on collecting those and getting those to their respective building uh, for records uh, so that we have those as well. Uh, so that's how attendance will work for now. And again, uh, if anything needs to be modified or adjusted, we are more than flexible. Uh, that's our, our one of our keywords for the summer is flexibility. So we'll, we'll take a look at how that's going. All right, uh, supplies provided by families. So if I don't mind, I'm gonna maybe ask one of our teachers, maybe Miss Robbie or um, another teacher to uh, just kind of share a little bit about some of the thought process behind uh, what overall, um, supplies are here that are would be awesome if they if if students could have. Yeah, so Robbie, um, we tried to be very cognizant of the fact that we didn't want families going out to, you know, spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on things. So we really tried to think about what was most essential for your kiddos to have at home. Um, of course, because they're all elementary school students, um, we do know that it's best practices to have um, kiddos with an actual pencil in their hand for at least part of their day. So um, you will be getting um, on August 31st during the pickup, you will be getting math journals and um, Zaner Blozer handwriting or cursive books and grammar books so that students can still have that practice um, of physical pencil to paper. Um, and then most of us, we have listed uh, supplies by grade level here for you. Um, most of us felt that it was important for our synchronous learning times for students to have a whiteboard and markers and erasers and things like that that went with that. Um, 
And we will be trying our best to um, provide a combination of virtual activities for your kiddos, as well as, like I said, the tactile um, paper and pencil, crayons and paper, depending on what grade level your child is in. So that was sort of the thinking behind the supplies. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And also, as we said, it's all about being flexible. And so there's not an expectation that, that uh, you know, all those supplies are in your house uh, by Monday or Tuesday of next week. We understand uh, that, you know, it takes time. Uh, and we do, and again, as Ms. Robbie said, we did try to think about items that you probably or may already have, uh, or if not, could um, pick up at the Dollar General or at Target. We're trying to be uh, budget mindful uh, here as well as we are uh, in, in all that we're doing uh, at this point in time. Uh, the one thing I will say is that, um, which is a, would be a really great investment, particularly for those families who have children of multiple grade levels, would be headphones. And so this way then the student is able to sort of focus in and, and hone in on, on their work. I know that when our boys and girls are in face-to-face -face settings, uh, when they're working in centers and they, they're using their headphones, it allows for them to be working on one thing while another group's working on something else and another group's working on something else. So that would definitely be um, something good to have. Mrs. McNichol uh, also put in here as well, just some ideas uh, for some items that if you're able to procure, awesome. If not, also not a big deal, uh, but that these are some things she thought about that if you had available at home, um, she would be uh, creating lessons and activities uh, that students could work on to continue that their awesome artwork uh, that they love to do uh, and have those things available. So um, that's what uh, she's working on as well and what she's provided for you, if that's, again, if, if available. I remember keeping in mind that our, our specials classes will be asynchronous and so, um, you know, Again, if you're finding that that you know your student's not able to get to something on a certain day, that's okay too. Um, again, uh, if you have these items, great. If not, um, you know, reach out to Ms. McNichol if you have questions or any any particular thoughts about that as well. And then, as Ms. Robbie shared, um, as a district, we want to make sure again that we are all that we're doing is to make sure that our boys and girls are, are getting as close to the experience that they would by showing up in the doors of our schools recognizing that this is a very challenging time for all of us in the community and in, in the world, as it were. And so we want to replicate as much of, of that face-to-face -face feel as possible. And so that being said, um, the work that we have in the classroom is the work that the, the boys and girls will have at home. Uh, so uh, as previously mentioned, on Monday, August 31st, from 2 to 3.30, um, each of the buildings will have their drive-by pickups for you so that you're able to get your students' supplies uh, that we have for you. So those um, would be the... Uh, workbooks, the Zaner Blozer, which is a print or cursive workbook uh, for some grade levels, a grammar workbook for a lot of grade levels, um, a math manipulative kit so the students can practice and, and, and have tangible math items to work on uh, to conduct their, their assignments and activities. Um, as well as this year, we were able to um, procure some funding so our students in grades K1 and 2 uh, will each have their own uh, magnetic uh, board with magnetic letter tiles for a program that we call Foundations, which is a really awesome program that helps our beginning, learn our beginning learners for both reading uh, and, and sounds and phonemic awareness, so phonics and how do you make letter sounds and what are the blends and what does it all sound like. Um, and they're able to take those letters and play with them and move them around on their on their tile board. So we were able to get funding to um, have one per child in grades K1 and 2. And so we're looking forward to that resource as well. Um, again, do note, however, that there are a few items uh, in each grade level that uh, we ask be returned to the building. Uh, once you, uh, if you were to end up in the spring semester, choose to come back face to face. Or again, at the end of this school year, if you if you remain in the Cyber Academy uh, for both semesters, uh, and then and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we're all back to what we used to be as our normal uh, come next fall, uh, then those items would, of course, um, those are district owned. And so therefore, we would uh, need those back so that we can then move forward and, and use those um, for years to come. Again, as I mentioned, um, August 31st, which is Monday in the afternoon, is supply pickup. Um, I do. I was able to collect from the principals uh, any specifics for the building. So, for again, for each of those three buildings, and so I will be putting that into a message that we'll be sending out to you, uh, just so that you have that, uh, you, so you know what right. where to go. Um, and so that, um, and then just knowing that we we are we tried to get all the supplies that we could. Uh, we have most of the items that we're going to have to start the school year, but again, understanding that um, you know with postal service and and 
pandemic, uh, that there may be some um, books or activities that haven't quite yet even arrived in our warehouse, even though they were ordered in July, as we do. Um, so uh, if we if there is a second pickup day at some point in September, uh, I know it's extra, an extra an extra step, so I apologize for that. But again, we're doing the best we can with what we got, uh, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to, to getting started sooner than later. Um, Two quick questions yeah. on the supply pickup. No, unfortunately, um, does it have to be the parent or guardian? It would be my daughter's grandmother. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think it would have to be the parent or guardian. No, I think it's just someone that, that you're comfortable. You know, those and letting the, 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 the uh, that they have to get permission to get the They won't do a screening on one side in a diagnostic on the other. Okay. Yep. And the other question I had was regarding the Chromebooks. Yes. Um, my child did not get a Chromebook last year. Um, we did make do without. So how do I obtain it for her this year? Yep. So um, you would need to um, contact our IT staff. So you would write, you would send an email. Um, so if you would like to, um, how about this to make it easier for you, is if you want to send an email to me, so Michael Donnelly, so M and, and Donnelly, D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y, at palisadessd.org. Uh, just send me an email with your name, your your student's name and grade level, and then I can put you in contact with our technology department. Okay, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Another quick question about pickup. Yes. Um, my son's homeschool is changing because of this. So do I pick it up at the homeschool or do I go to the new homeschool? Nope. So that's a really great question. So, and I apologize for any confusion. So what I referenced on that sheet for quote homeschool or home building, that's for the teacher. Um, our students are still so if you if you are if your student um, is, you know, coming to us from Springfield, they're still, you know, that that's Springfield is still their homeschool. Tinicum, Tinicum and Durham not okay. Durham not Yep. Yep. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Great question. All right. So um, setting up an effective home learning space. Uh, I don't know who would, uh, which of my I have a question. College. Hello, this is Christy Kennedy. I have a question. Okay, sure. Um, I'm new to the district, so I'm kind of winging it. Um, I'm still waiting for an email so my daughter can log in with the Chromebook we picked up, and that hasn't been sent through yet. Do you know anything about the status of those emails? Yeah, um, thanks. So well, well, yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to Palisades. We're excited to have you and your daughter. Um, I uh, after these two presentations, I've, I've been taking notes, and so what I'll be able to do is to reach out to our technology department uh, and our and our director of communications to find out where they are in that process. Um, I know that we still have a few families um, who are finishing up their registration process that we're in contact with as well, uh, joining the district. And so um, I'll find out from them what their what their timeline is to get that information out to folks. Yeah, first I was told it was two days ago, then I was told it was supposed to be yesterday and it still hasn't happened. Oh goodness, okay, so. yep, I will, yep, I'll follow up on that for you, no problem. Okay, so I, um, my daughter's name is Colleen Kennedy and she'll be in third grade. Great, awesome. Well, welcome, welcome to to the district, to you and Colleen. Thank you. Mm -hmm, sure. All right. So uh, let's see. Which of my teacher colleagues would like to just briefly go over setting up an effective home learning space? I can do it, Mrs. Robbie. Again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we just thought we'd give a few tips as to um, how to set up sort of a comfortable, quiet, effective home space. Again, this is just some tips and tricks. I know personally I was teaching out of my living room during the pandemic, and I found it very important to do this also for myself to set up an office at home. So um, just some tips to make sure that your child is limiting distractions, um, you know, away from TV or smaller siblings, things like that. Um, try to work in the same place every day and sort of stick to a routine. We know that routine is very important for our younger um, kiddos. So just to kind of have that routine, we've tried to do that with the schedule as much as possible, but um, even as far as just where the child is working every day to keep it consistent. Make sure that your child has what they need um, as far as their Chromebook and their physical materials, their workbooks, 
um, all ready to go at their fingertips. We do recommend probably posting the daily schedule. And then um, on the actual slide that um, you can see in this presentation, there's a link to um, a usernames and passwords page that we thought was really important because we will be sending out to you if we haven't already started um, usernames and passwords for the various learning platforms that we're going to be using. So as you get those usernames and passwords, you can jot them down on this and then um, it would be super helpful to have that posted for your kiddo in their learning space. Thank you for that. And so um, as we were talking about that, um, it just so happened on social media, on, on Twitter, that I, I came across these pictures. And so we've put this in here as, a, as, a, as an example, uh, if you wanted to envision what that looks like. Um, the supplies there are um, were all purchased um, either at, as I mentioned previously, a dollar store or a dollar general, uh, and at Target in the dollar bin section. Uh, the only item uh, that's a little more costly would be that, that uh, larger whiteboard trifold, as it were, uh, which you can also uh, get at places like Walmart or Target as well. Um, so again, just a, not that anyone has to do that, but we just thought it would be a nice service to provide you a visual as to what that might look like um, for your kiddos to give them that space to, to set up and make it their own, their own little classroom. Um, here on this one of the last slides here, the second to last slide, the penultimate slide, we have um, some Google tips and tricks for students. Uh, we did share something similar out in the spring and had that on our website. We wanted to put this in the one-stop shop for you as our as our elementary cyber academy. Um, that again, our students who were with us last year in the spring at the elementary level did a phenomenal job of learning real quickly how to get onto Google and use the classroom. Uh, and again, we're gonna continue to work through what that looks like both from a user as an educator, as the teacher, as well as the user and from the student and the parent. And we'll continue to work through uh, any, any areas that we need to improve upon. But in the meantime, uh, it, this is a short little video uh, for tips and tricks that um, students can look at and you too as a grown up could look at uh, to be able to help our, our, our kiddos uh, navigate their, their learning platform, Google Classroom. And then finally, just wanted to end uh, with the last slide here, which if I slide down, there we go, uh, is that just in general, uh, we're super excited uh, to, to have you as part of this journey with us. Uh, it is, is not anything that anyone expected uh, that occurred in March, you know, the pandemic, everyone's trying to make the best of it as they can, uh, remaining positive, uh, and, and just again, working together, uh, because at the end of the day, it's what's best for our kids, it's what our kids need, right? And so this year, as, as LL Elementary Cyber Academy, we are one team. Uh, the kids, the parents, the teachers, and 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 the uh, the principals, and I as well as a support. Um, as a director of curriculum instruction and assessment, um, I support all of our teachers and, and all of our um, principals across the district in all of our buildings, K through 12. And so, uh, as a former elementary principal myself, I've I've kind of dived in a little bit and worked with our our team here to to develop this program and will be a support. Uh, to our principals and to our, our teachers, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be, well, it's going to be a lot different, but it's going to be really good. And, and we're excited to work with all those students and with you as well uh, as we continue uh, this important partnership. Uh, and so with that, we are going to be uh, Palisades Pirates. Uh, we are, that's who we all are when we get to middle school and then when we, when we leave it in graduation at the high school. And so we are as one team and we're going to make it an outstanding year. And we want to thank you again for being a part of this presentation. I'm going to take the presentation off and flip back to my screen so I can see and open up the floor. Uh, if there are any uh, questions that are for that you feel out there that might be good for a larger group, uh, then then go ahead and you can star six, which would be to take yourself off mute, and we'll take a couple of minutes to Hi. to answer those. Hi, Hi Dr. Donnelly. <laughs> Yep, okay, so how about this? What I'll do is I'm, I see a couple of folks are off, uh, off mute, so I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna call out the first three digits and the last two digits of the caller. And then uh, if you have a question, great. If not, then we'll move on to the next person. Uh, so the first one I see is 267 and the last five nine. Hello. Hello, Dr. Donnelly. I just had a question about students who benefit from Title I reading. I was wondering how the cyber students, um, if they will be evaluated for Title I reading and then how that service would be provided. Sure. Yep. Uh, uh, thank you for that question. Yep. So our plan is our students will, uh, our, our cyber students will uh, be evaluated the same as our just the same as our face-to-face our -face students would be. All right. um, essentially, uh, then what we'll do is then we'll figure out in the schedule how to provide those services for them, uh, whereas our, our Title I teachers would be able to then um, 
host a virtual session as well, whether that be individual or small group based on the needs of our kiddos, just like they would face to face. Um, and given that we have a lot of asynchronous time built in through the day, it creates a little bit of an extra level of flexibility when it comes to assigning and scheduling those interventions. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I see 610 and the last two digits are 69. No, that's me. I'm Christy Kennedy. I don't have any questions at this point. Just hopefully waiting for that uh, email so I can, my daughter can get into the Chromebook and then we can start working with Great. that. Awesome. Very and good. Then Thanks I have for that. about Google Classroom, I guess. Yep. Sounds like a plan. We'll, we'll get that all figured out. No worries. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. All right. I see 215 and the last two digits, 79. Okay, move on. I see on off mute, I see 267 and the last two digits, 55. Five. Hi, thanks for taking our question. So on the last meeting, uh, July 24th, the, uh, the schedule seemed to be very flexible for students where, you know, if they couldn't get things in exactly at a certain time, that that would be okay and that they would work with students. And now having these three meeting times, that will not work for our household, we have two two people that are working during those times. How are you going to accommodate students that can't be in those meeting times? Well, I think we'd have to have a conversation offline to discuss. I mean, at the the idea is that um, those are the three meeting times that would be the live instruction, um, and those lessons aren't not going to be taped every day. Um, the lessons that would that would be taped are those that are in advance for asynchronous, and so. Um, Perhaps we'd have to, we should have a conversation offline about spe your specific needs. Um, but again, um, we did try to create as much flexibility as we could within the schedule and only having three touch points in the day. Um, and so that's, that was the design of that schedule. Sounds good, I'll send you an email, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. All right, and then I see here, the last one that I see is, um, and, this, uh, and, and then I do have to run, I apologize for our secondary meeting, uh, but I do see off mute is 484, last two digits, 18. Hi, how are you? This is Carla Hayes. Um, okay. I just have a quick question, how's everybody today too? I wanted to know, will the children be allowed to get books from their library online? And if so, what is it that I need to do so that I can be enrolled for that? Mm -hmm. Well, first, thanks for, for joining today, Ms. Hayes. Um, that's a, a question that we have, and I, it's fun that we have um, actually on the call, we have our elementary teacher librarian happens to be right there. So I'm going to have her respond. Thank you. Uh, just moving my phone out so that it doesn't get the reception there to the double double volume there. So um, we have found a way for students to be able to search and place holds on the books. So I will be doing lessons during our specialist time for your library specialist and I'll teach children how to find in our Destiny card catalog and then request a hold for books. And um, as soon as we're able to get up our library assistance schedule, they'll be able to pull the books and then have them available for pickup at the front office of your home building. Okay, thank you. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Cruz. That was great. And thanks for that question. So again, um, at this point in time, uh, we, we are going to uh, bring this meeting to a conclusion to go ahead and start with another one. But I want to thank everyone who joined us on the call today. I want to thank all of our teachers and support staff for the work that they have been doing to get us up and running and ready. Uh, again, there will be there will be bumps in the road. We know it. But guess what? We are resilient. We are Palisades. Uh, we'll get through it. We're going to make it great. Our kids are going to be uh, you know, better than ever. I want to thank you again for your ongoing patience and, and support of all that we're doing on behalf of you and your kiddos. And again, thank you so much for being part of this today. Uh, if you do have individual questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Also, uh, you do know who your, your, your students' teachers are now, so you can also reach out to them as well. Uh, and we look forward to getting started officially uh, with this group on Tuesday next week, September 1st. Uh, I will again send out that email with the specifics for the pickup for your buildings for Monday afternoon. That'll be coming out at some point, uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, and with that said, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope that you be well and have a great weekend and uh, we will see you next week. Take care.